Last week's video on conducting corporate interviews, I was not expecting that kind of feedback. That was one that was kind of low down in my notes field as a filler for a time like right now when I don't have any BTS sh to showcase. It's in the top two highest views in the first four days it was published. And also, I think some of the most constructive feedback and comments in there, people weighing in, thank you very much on uh, your techniques to try to salvage difficult interviews with nervous candidates. In the last couple of days, Sony announced their new cinema camera. It's going to fit right in between the FX9 and the Venice 2 and looks to be the long overdue replacement to the F5 and F55 platform. Those were fantastic cameras for the last 10, maybe more than 10 years. I didn't invest in that platform, although I've worked on many projects with those cameras. Instead, I went with the uh, Amira you see behind me. My first one came in in 2014, picked up a second one a few years later which I've since sold. So now I'm down to that one cam. It's actually up for sale still on Facebook Marketplace, or you can reach out me to me directly if you're interested. I've had a few kind of lower offers, but uh, the reality is since I listed it for sale, I think it's been not quite six months, four to six months. I have booked roughly 16,000 US in business with that camera. No, those aren't straight rentals. Some of them were were, but for the most part, those were owner operator jobs that were RE specific. So had I sold that camera for, let's say 16 to $20,000, um, that would have been lost business. I think a couple of those days I may ha have been able to salvage and keep the booking on and shoot FX nine. But uh, at any rate, at this point it's for sale, but I'm not really in a big hurry. But if I get an offer, that's close to my asking, then uh, I'll consider letting it go. So I have a business problem to solve. It's a good problem. I've got some capital that's just sitting idle, uh, eroding away with inflation in my business savings account that I need to uh, deploy into something. I'm going to run through a few things I'm considering. Uh, how I try to manage my cash flow with the business as just an owner operator. I have two employees. I have my wife on payroll also, but and my son now part time. But for the most part, it's me as the, the sole full time employee. So that the payroll monthly expense plus all the other business expenses, business insurance, miscellaneous supplies and repairs on the business side as well as any travel or production costs I have to float for 30 to 90 days until my customers pay their invoices. I leave that in business checking and I try to keep two months of average operating capital in business checking. And then on the first thereabouts of each month, anything over that two months, I move over to my business savings account. And if everything's going well, that accumulates. So I actually burned up one month of that checking operating capital this month on September 1, I had to cover all my bills because I haven't really worked much. And then I went on vacation, which I talked about in my last video. So I've got this six week gap of me not going out and working. Now beyond that, uh, I've got about 50K US to redeploy. It's just that I don't need. I used to keep a bigger balance in reserve when I was doing more uh, kind of acting as like a subcontractor to a production company or a co-production. Like I do a commercial where I might be responsible for payrolling out and hiring freelancers for my, uh, let's see, grip, lighting, camera, teleprompter sometimes, sort of roles that fall under the, the, or parallel to the DP side. Those jobs that would come in like once or twice a quarter for me. But now that I'm in Texas, I'm, I'm not really doing much of that. Actually, let's see, it's been, my last one was in January. So it's been uh, eight or nine months. So here are a few things I'm considering or others have suggested to me, uh, replacing my van with a new one. I've got uh, 135,000 miles on that van. No problems other than tires, oil changes. Uh, I think I did the, did the belt, serpentine belts. I had to put in a new radiator fan. I think a couple hoses, filters. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. I've been keeping up on the major service intervals, whatever those entail, but no, no major other replacements. For my news work, I would love to buy an ENG camera. The Sony 400 probably makes the most sense, but it's not a 4K camera. I'm blanking at the moment. Is it the 700 on the 4K capable three chipper? But the struggle there is like, I don't have clients and I'm not missing work because I don't have one. It's just me knowing when I'm shooting your average news package that I could do a better job and get better shots with a proper two thirds inch three chip cam with a 
18 to 22 by Zoom with a 2x doubler. Majority of the network news I'm booking is just stand up live shots with a correspondent, or it's the live interview guest where generally I've got a little bit more time to light and polish the subject. Being out in the field covering national news events, the most common camera I'm seeing in use by the networks is the Sony FX9. It's not ENG cameras. Uh, it's ABC, NBC, CBS, from what I've seen, FX9s. Fox seems to be, from what I, again, this is just what I'm seeing in the field, but they're still mostly on two-thirds inch cams. Same for CNN, although talking with a few staffers at CNN, they do have a big fleet of FX9s. They are out there in use. Uh, I think they're doing more feature packages and long form programming with them, but I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if uh, you're using it. But for the most part, it's FX9s out there for live shots at the network level. So I'm right in line there. So if I'm not missing work because I don't have it, uh, I'm going to move on from my, my dreams of having a $30,000 ENG camera. And lastly, like least sexy, probably most logical. And this was a, a fail of my own doing. And I was totally aware when I did it. But I have a line of credit with a variable interest rate loan. Well, today that interest rate is 8.25. So if I pay down 50 grand, let's do that math real quick. Yeah, so 50K over 12 months is 41.25. So it's $343 a month in interest that I could knock out. That pays for or would pay for in savings. Uh, most of what we burn eating out in restaurants per month just by moving some money around sitting idle in my business checking tax has already been paid so i think that's what i'm going to do and then if i decide to go with this new sony camera q1 of next year i can draw from that line of credit been thinking about the sony burano now for about 24 hours since i watched the launch video and uh here's just kind of a list of my thoughts on it i still to this day would prefer to shoot every project on that amira it is heavy. It is a big power hog. I think it's 65 watts plus accessories. Um, but that weight is still this. As an old school TV shooter that started in ENG, I prefer this form factor. And even the Amira being narrow and longer compensates for your t a typical zoom lens on the front end. With my 17 to 120 servo zoom, which is notorious for being front heavy, all the weights up in the front element, it's still not 100% balanced on my shoulder. I'm still fighting a little bit with my wrist. The FX9 is, I'd say more than half the weight of that lens is on my hand when the FX9 is on my shoulder, and that's running a gold mount battery on the back. Now, if I run my shark fin with two gold mounts on the FX9, then it balances almost neutral on my shoulder, you know, not fatiguing my, my arm. For years, I shot on the C300 Mark I. That was the in-demand camera. Made a lot of money with that. I had two of them. I still have one. Um, hate that format. I just I don't like cube cameras. I'm not a big gimbal shooter or drone, so the Alexa Mini didn't uh, make sense to me when it was announced. Now, in retrospect, I probably should have bought one. I would have uh, rented more and earned more than my two Amiras. But for me as an owner-operator, the Amira still makes the most sense. I like that shape. So the Burano's getting a little bit more in that cube format of camera where I shoot so much handheld and like underarm. I just, this style shooting, and maybe this is just me showing my age and the generation of cameras I came up with. Uh, that's just not intuitive to me. And um, I don't know. I like shoulder cams. Raw workflow with the Burano. I can't think of a time when I had a client request to shoot on raw. I shot on red since the very beginning. I got my hands on camera number 99 and the first batch of 100 that shipped. Good buddy of mine who's a director and editor purchased that camera. I was actually at him with him at NAB the year they announced the red first time red had a booth. It was just like a stage with like a, a monitor and Janard was like in a little side lounge smoking a cigar and they had like dirt bike footage running on a monitor. And uh, yeah, my buddy Kip, if you see this thumbs up to you, he threw his credit debt card down. He's one of the first ones got camera 99 of a hundred. Then I went on to buy the Scarlet when that came out. And then the Epic, no, sorry, upgraded the Scarlet from the MX sensor to the Dragon sensor. And then I bought an Epic Dragon. So for a while I had a Dragon Scarlet and a Dragon Epic. And then 
picked up the C300s, bought the Amira, and immediately sold the Reds and just went Ari uh, full time after that. And even in all my Ari time, all my years shooting Ari starting in like early 2011, maybe late 2010, uh, one raw shoot on Ari. It was a commercial, national commercial. And the only reason we shot raw is the post house was on site. It was a VFX shoot with some celebrity athletes and the VFX shop wanted to experiment with raw. It wasn't a requirement. It was just a like, Hey, let's try this out and see how it works. But other than that one, and that was on the Alexa classic have not had a raw request. So I, in my little world, I don't see that happening for me with the, if I go with the Burano client trends for me now being based in Texas, I'm in the small South Texas market. Although most of my work, as you see is travel. I am, uh, my clients are trending in the like, FX6, FX3 direction, smaller shoots. I'm still getting my rates, so I'm happy. Um, but I'm doing more and more of this one-man band work. And uh, again, like I'm getting closer to 50 than 40. And that little FX3 is becoming a lot more appealing, especially if I got to do a two-camera interview flying somewhere. I would love to buy an Alexa 35. Still my favorite image is on that Amira behind me or any Ari camera. Although the Venice is beautiful and I'm sure the Burano is going to look the same. But uh, it's a hundred grand for the Alexa 35 body. Even if I were in California, that would be a stretch. Uh, I had more corporate, high-end corporate and then TV commercial work there that is now shooting on the Alexa 35, but even if I were still there doing that work, that alone wouldn't be enough revenue for me to justify a $100,000 camera plus a whole new set of battery technology. Uh, I would have to also consign it, work out a relationship with a rental house up in the LA Hollywood market. But here in South Texas, it doesn't make sense. Maybe if I lived in Dallas and wanted to push and chase after the commercial work again, uh, maybe then I could do it. Assuming I can also bookend it with a consignment deal at a rental house, but I'm just not there. I don't need it. I don't need to take that big of a risk at this point in my career. Two items I would like to see on the Burano that I don't think are stock from Sony are one, a sliding integrated dovetail for the shoulder pad and top handle EVF assembly so that the center of gravity can rebalance on the fluid head or my shoulder without having to work with a uh, Ari style dovetail. And obviously Ari dovetail is not really gonna work on my shoulder. The aftermarket solutions I've seen for other cameras that allow the shoulder pad to slide around, add a whole bunch of stack height to the camera, putting the weight up higher, making the camera more tippy and awkward. And also the, like the next strain now, I'm struggling with my chin up to look into the viewfinder. I've seen a lot of photos of people opting with like Franken rigs with Canon cameras and some DSLRs with an eyepiece viewfinder where their head is not level with the horizon. It's like up here and over. And that hurts my neck right now just doing it for five seconds. And the second one, and this frustrates me and all the other old school shooters, is I predate V-mount. And I've got so much infrastructure compatible to gold mount, I'm not going to switch to V-mount batteries. And Sony does not offer a native part that allows you to install gold mount on the back of the camera you got to run an adapter it's more stack height it's always like loose and flexy and i've had connection issues on other cameras like ari it's a spring-loaded gold contact so you can swap out with four screws the gold mount plate for a v-mount seen that on the other eng cameras i think sony yeah they used to offer that like in the beta cam era but integrated v-mount uh, I'm too old for that stuff. I'm stuck on gold mount and I don't want to run adapters and stacking. But I am glad to see they got rid of an internal battery solution. Like the FX9, it got that big hollow area in the back because I, I never run those internal batteries. And that seems to be the case with all the other ones I've seen out in the field. Everyone's running a third party gold or V. If and when I decide to buy this camera, I don't necessarily have to use cash. I've got a few other options I can redraw from my line of credit although it's going to be at 8.25, possibly higher APR. Uh, if I sold one FX9 and that Amira, that would be enough capital to do a clean exchange, have the Burano as my A cam, FX9 as a B cam, FX3 as a C camera. Although that stresses me a little bit, it already is a little bit of a stress factor for me running 
two FX9s and an FX3, even when I got all the additional support crew to cover it, just like different cameras, different support accessories, they use different media, different batteries. Going forward, this whole mid-range of production for owner-operators, I think it's more mirrorless little bodies and specialty cams. I'm shooting on this iPhone for B-roll and sometimes A-roll more and more as the quarters tick by, uh, particularly for news. We've made the decision several times breaking news. I end up shooting it on the iPhone for the sole reason that I can airdrop this to the producer's edit timeline versus card, card reader, external hard drive, just it's like fast and easy and intuitive. Or I have the ability over the network to send a quick clip. I would love to see airdrop and a commercial grade camera, even if it's only a proxy level file. All right, that's all I got for you this week. Next week, hopefully, I'm back on the road and we'll have some BTS. The job is confirmed, pending weather, and they're going to make that decision on Monday. And if that unravels, then the following week, I'll be in Vegas and we'll definitely have some BTS and new items to discuss. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.